You know that feeling that you have, or feelings that you have whenever you fall in love with somebody, whenever you love them and you, you know, you got those butterflies in your stomach, your heart starts beating like crazy, your mind is flooded with all sorts of thoughts, and you just can't seem to think straight, and all sorts of crazy things. You can't, I mean, it, it's indescribable, though, right? It's, I mean, you feel like you got to throw up at the same time, and it's like just huge rush of emotions and feelings and thoughts, and it's, it's a wonderful thing, and yet at the same time, it's horrible, and it's like, oh my gosh, why do I, why do I have to feel this way and everything, you know, and it's wonderful, and yet horrific at the same time, and, you know, at the same time, all we want to do is be with that person. You know, we just want to hang with that person. We just want to hear that person's voice, see them, whatever. We just want to be with that person that we love. And, you know, we would do anything for that person. It's, it's crazy, right? And yet all those feelings and emotions and thoughts and just reactions that go on and just flood you when you're in love with somebody don't aren't even a flicker to true love and by true love I mean real love let me tell you a story about this guy that I know when he was four years old somebody introduced into his life sexual sins perversion four years old and he was set on a path that would destroy his life started having sex with kids four years old started manipulating people four years old started out being you know once every every now and then with other kids with fr his friends and everything but then it grew let me tell you something you know this guy it was me four years old and I was introduced to this now this was you know just something that I would do every now and then with friends I would mess up mess around with them and unfortunately a lot of people looked up to me so I introduced this I basically planted that seed of perversion in the lives of far too many and I just continued living then when I was about, you know, right before I turned nine years old, God opened my eyes. And it's, it was literally like a veil, a veil was taken away from my eyes, and I saw how things really were. And I hit the ground right then and there, and I told God, God, I am so sorry for what I have been doing. Please, save me. I give you my life because I have messed it up so badly and he saved me right there he revealed to me what was going on all around me and also in my own life one of the things that he told me was that I had to get rid of this perversion in my life and me I was thinking okay well yeah I can do that but guess what easier said than done not only did it, I struggle to get it out of my life but it got worse what used to be every now and then became a weekly thing became a daily thing then it continued to grow to where I couldn't even go half a day without giving in to lust a child then it didn't even stop at you know just normal sexual sin or whatever bestiality incest every single sexual perversion that you know has been known to the demonic realm that was in my life I was messing around with every single genre and it just kept growing worse and worse and I was living a Jekyll and Hyde life and yet you know what the best part is God loved me. He didn't cast me away. Let me tell you what real love is. 
while I was jumping in a mud pit of sin, while I was digging these pits, wallowing in it, while I was performing all sorts of messed up things, while I was being living a Jekyll and Hyde life and enjoying Mr. Hyde side of my life, God loved me. He didn't give up on me. He continued to work with me. He saved me so many times from going down even worse paths. Let me tell you what real love is. When I was deep in the mud pits of sin, worse than mud, think of it as vomit, okay? Fecal matter, whatever you want to think about. But you know what? I was way over my head in that junk. And yet God loved me. He continued to, he didn't give up on me. I would have to run to him and ask him, God, please forgive me. I am so sorry for messing up. I am so sorry for, you know, just committing these horrible, horrible acts against you and against me and against this person that I have involved into in this. Please forgive me. And he would forgive me. And I would beg him so badly, Lord, I just want to get out of this. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of hurting you. I'm tired of hurting myself. I'm tired of killing myself spiritually. And I am so tired of messing up. And I would fall. I'd be doing great one morning. Five minutes later, I would be falling. I'd be searching for somebody. I would be searching for anything to gratify the lust of the flesh. And yet God loved me. Why? Why would somebody love somebody like that? The feelings of love and just that overwhelm you when you fall in love with somebody, that doesn't hold a candle to the love of God. I'm telling you, if God can love somebody like me, to where he took me from that horrible lifestyle that I knew almost um, that I was trapped in for most of my life and he delivered me from that it didn't happen overnight no because I had to learn I, I developed these habits and I, the, in, the devil just had that huge grip in my life and on my heart and I had a blackened heart poisoned by sin and that doesn't just happen overnight. And I expect God to heal me overnight like that. He does that for some people. But for me, I had to learn. I had to learn to put my trust in Him. To take these things. I had to learn to love Him more than I loved the lust of the flesh. More than I loved anything else. And let me tell you, that's a hard thing to learn sometimes. A lot of people have not learned that to love God more than they love themselves, more than they love these things in their heart. But let me tell you, the love that you feel when somebody's around you, the loneliness that you might feel because you don't have somebody that loves you this way or whatever, that is empty. That is fake compared to the love of God. And you feel how real those things are. When you fall in love with somebody, there's no, oh, well, this isn't real, is it? You know, you really do have those feelings. And yet they are fake, empty, nothing compared to the love that God has for you. Can you imagine somebody like me who was into all sorts of disgusting, horrible things every single day of his life going out and finding somebody to mess around with going out and finding an animal anything to perform perversion on that's how horrible of it, how deep it was in my heart somebody who would be perfectly fine one moment and then just fall down deeper than 
Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have anything on what was going on in my heart. And I, I often brought that to God. I'm like, God, the world does, nobody does these things. Why am I struggling with this? Why do I have to go through this? And it's not like I was blaming God for my problems, no. But I saw how horrible, how horribly decrepit it was. And how could somebody love somebody like me doing these things? Cheating on God, basically. And yet he never gave up on me. The times when I would be praying to him, love, fully loving him, you know, just enjoying reading the Bible, reading his word, praying to him, worshiping him. And then an hour later, there I am wallowing in my sin again. How could God forgive somebody like that? because he loves them that much. There is no amount of words to describe the real love of God that he has poured out on my life and he has poured out on your life and many others lives. So when you look at all these things, all these people, relationships or those that you love, those that you may whatever, those that love you and you think to yourself this is the life this is great it's nothing it is nothing compared to the love that God has for us that he went ahead and left the throne of heaven in perfection people think about heaven and they're like oh it's so wonderful think about living in heaven and in coming down to this earth and experiencing all these things that we have here hell compared to heaven and yet he willingly left that why because the only way for us to be free from the mud the sin that we wallow in that is in our hearts the only way for us to be able to live a life of freedom true freedom was so that he pay the price to clean us from our sins and be able to set us free so that we could live life the way that we were supposed to from the start in a relationship with him how could God love somebody like me I'm not gonna get into the details about the things that I have done because it's not about me it's about what God has done for me the pits that I was in, the patience God had with me, and has still to this day. I'm not perfect, and yet he still continues to be there for me. But somebody like me, who was lower than the lowest of worms, dirtier than the worst of pigs and I enjoyed it I enjoyed those sins because you know what and whenever I was going through a problem I knew I could run to those things for gratification for enjoyment and it pleased my flesh a lot and yet it was destroying my heart it was destroying me spiritually and God knew that so when I would mess up he would be there waiting for me to come back running to him to I bet to beg him for forgiveness and not only that but to beg for help to get out of this pit that I dug and I jumped into I cannot explain the deeply rooted problems that I had that God went ahead and patiently took me out of despite spitting in his face so many times telling him that you know what God I wanna go back to my sin forget you God let me go enjoy myself with this God I know that you're right but you know what I wanna be doing my own thing and yet he still loved me and was waiting for me to run back to him 
And that is not an excuse to sin whatsoever. Because I guarantee that if I died, I would be going to hell. If I died before I went, out, went ahead and ran back to God, and I cannot explain how many times I look back and I cannot say how many things that God protected me from. Diseases, from going so far dirt, down certain paths. I remember when I was 15 years old, a rumor spread about me that I was a child molester. And I cannot tell you how horrible of a thing that is to be to have cast onto your name to be cast into I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy but you know what it opened my eyes because I was more than capable of doing that thing and yet God had stopped me from doing these things so many times I knew that I hadn't done it but I knew I was more than capable of doing it and it woke me up and made me realize God I have to get out of this I have to stop this because if I continue down this path and I continue wallowing in this pit I'm gonna be worse than the I will be the worst sexual predator ever because you know what the devil gave me a lot of cunning skill to go ahead and cover up my tracks nobody knew the things that I was involved with even as a child Nobody knew about these things. They thought I was a great kid. Nobody would believe the things that I was doing. I could have gotten away with things. And yet, you know what? God protected me from going down and getting worse and worse and worse. Even though I would have loved if he protected me from going down these paths altogether and not having to deal with the sexual perversions that I was involved with every single genre of that garbage of that poison things that the world couldn't even imagine up I was doing I would love if God had protected me from that but you know what I love God even more because he may not have been he may have allowed me to have that free will choice to go down those paths but he also provided love and he also provided a way out he lifted me out of these pits and words cannot describe that kind of love we think we know what love is whenever we fall in love with a person whenever somebody loves us whenever we get a hug whenever we have these floods of emotions and thoughts and feelings we think we know what love is we think that's love we think that's a wonderful thing but the love God has that would be like comparing a little flicker tiny little flicker of a flint stone compared to the sun that's how much God loves us and I think he lo deserves our love in, in return I can't stress it enough the kind of love that God has poured out over my life to deliver me from all manner of evil horrible things so if somebody can save me the real chief of sinners if somebody if God can go ahead and pour his love out on me and change me he can certainly do the same thing for you you know the popular saying is that if somebody loves you they'll accept you for who you, who you are and that's true God does accept you for who you are but you know what real love is Real love is not going to go ahead and leave you in whatever pit that you're in. Real love is not going to leave you where you are. Real love wants to improve you, to make you even better and better and better. Because there's always the opportunity to get better at something, to become a better person. And it's not to say that you're a horrible person, no. But there's always room for improvement. And God wants to get make you better. That is what real love is. That he will take you where you are and he will lift you out of the pit. Out of the hell that you have put yourself into. And clean you up out of your own blood that you have covered in yourself. In your own garbage and feces and vomit. 
that you've covered yourself in and you think there's nothing wrong with it or you realize that there's something wrong with this picture but you can't seem to get out of it God can bring you out of it all he wants is for you to love him enough to come to him to turn to him and to accept his hand that is being held out that is true love and we need to realize how much God is worthy of our love these feelings these thoughts whatever whenever we think we love somebody whenever our our husbands and wives boyfriends girlfriends crushes whatever that does not hold a candle to God's love for us if he can do it for me he can definitely do it for you and I cannot stress that enough to love God because he has loved us he's loved me more than anybody else I've been in a lot of relationships growing up only a few of them were real relationships though where there was a real love instead of a selfish pleasure and yet you know what I know those things cannot hold a candle cannot even be compared to what God has done for me and the love that he's poured out on me nothing nothing compares to God's love that he chooses to forgive us whenever we spit in his face and yet he's just waiting there with his arms wide open just waiting for us to run back to him to ask him to forgive us because to, to plead with him that he see because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross that he see us through him through the son Jesus Christ and that by his blood we're washed from what we just messed up with and not only that but to be just to be able to get out of what we have just done to be set free so that we don't have to keep running back to that thing that is destroying us because it is destroying us we may think we love it we may think it's a safe place for us to run to whenever we're going downhill whenever we're experiencing pressure from, from life we may think it's a wonderful place I can't tell you how many times that I felt like I belonged whenever I would go and run off to these things there's many communities you know I, I say that that it's a group of people that I felt that you know that acceptance or, or whatever I felt a fake love from that in my sin and yet you know what it is so fake there is no comparison to what true love is and we need to turn to God and those who are in Jesus Christ those who are Christians need to start loving God because he has forgiven us of so much the idols that we've set up the things that we allow to keep us from going to him from turning to him from praying from reading the Bible from going to church whatever from obeying him the things that we allow to stop us and even our own hearts the other loves that we have when God is pleading with us when he is telling us please I don't want you to hurt yourself doing these things anymore come to me let me set you free let me clean you up and let me make you so that you don't do these things anymore because I don't want to see you go to hell I don't want to see you mess up and hurt yourself and kill yourself spiritually so please run back to me I love you so much let's run to him and let's love him that is true love not feelings not emotions but true love because he sets us free because he is begging for us to run to him whenever we have right after we have spit in his face
right after we've stabbed ourselves with a knife, spiritually speaking, killing ourselves because, through drinking, through sex, through whatever. He loves us enough to set us free from these things. And He deserves our love. You know, I've often wondered to myself, why is it that certain people don't seem to love God? And, he, and God reminded me, you know, He says that in His Word, Jesus mentions those who have been forgiven much love much. And I can't express how many sins I have been forgiven of and he has poured his love out for me and I don't get sad and emotional or anything like that because of what I've done but because of the love that he has done for me that he has poured out on me it is incomparable to anybody else any other things that have been done for me anything else I have experienced that is real love that is true love we think we know what love is we think we know what all these things are when we get these feelings in our minds and in our hearts and in the stomachs we just we just want to be around that person but guess what God wanted to be with us so much that he kill, he died on a cross to be with us because we, we couldn't have a relationship we were covered in our sin we can't have that relationship with God so how did he get it he had to take our sins away before we could if he went to the cross and you know what the word says about Jesus on the cross we think oh a few scratches a few bruises a few cuts whatever he was beaten so badly that when people looked at him they couldn't even tell he was a man they couldn't even tell I imagine he looked worse than anything that we have ever seen in our lives we would get disgusted by you know these images I imagine Jesus looked even worse because he took on the sin of the world and he didn't have to he didn't have to do that he did it because he loved us that is real love that he goes ahead and he picks us out of the pits that we are in and just wants us to embrace him just wants us to never let go of him to walk with him to talk with him to be with us we think we want to be with those that we love can you imagine how much God wants us to be with him and yet we push him away let's love him back let us love God because he has loved us the Word of God says that here in his love not that we loved him but that he loved us greater love has no man than this that he laid down his life for his friends and Jesus called us friends didn't just call us servants or anything like that he said friend and he wants to be in our relationship with us that is greater love than anything else that we think we know when we talk about people that we may have feelings for the goosebumps that we get, the butterflies in our stomach, the, the many heart attacks that we feel, the attractions, the, the longing that we feel to be with somebody, that doesn't hold a candle to what God has for us. Love God because He's loved us and He deserves our love. Fall in love with God because He can take you out of the pits that you're in and He can truly make you out to be the person that you were born to be to do wonderful things and to live in a wonderful place with him love God he's loved us that's real love you wanna know what real love is read the Bible talk to God consider the things that he has done for you that's real love.